Today, we're going to look at the G-Skill Ripjaws 5, designed for 6th generation Core i7, Core i5 Intel processors, right after the bump. Now you can use this with other DDR4 platforms, but older DDR4 memory, especially DDR4 memory that's maybe on fire sale, was a little sketchy with 2133 when it first came out on the X99 platform. I mean, the X99 platform used DDR4, Z170 chipset and Skylake uses DDR4. Skylake is a little less forgiving than X99. X99, you know, keeping up with DDR4 was kind of a thing, and so you could end up with memory kits that were maybe a little sketchy, maybe around the 2133 mark, because DDR4, 2133, sort of at the lowest end for Z170, and uh, you really need to make sure that you get a memory kit that is compatible or advertised as tested with Z170 or on your motherboard's compatibility list. So in our case, we're going to take a look at the G-Skill Ripjaws 5 on an Asus Z170A. The Z170A board from Asus is the board where they put all the best features in at the most aggressive price point they possibly could while actually retaining some of the more interesting and cool features that Asus does in terms of fan control and BIOS access and hardware platform features, five-way optimization, that kind of thing. So... We're gonna take a look at the G-Skill memory. Now this memory is designed for three gigahertz. So that's three gigahertz on an XMP profile. If you're not familiar with XMP profiles, what it is, is there's an EEPROM, an electronically erasable programmable read-only memory that is on each one of these sticks of RAM, each one of these DIMMs. And this EEPROM stores the timing information about how the processor should interface with the RAM. And just depending on how the RAM is seated in the RAM slot and the humidity and temperature when you physically install the RAM and just lots of little physical differences, maybe some physical differences when the motherboard is manufactured from one motherboard to the next from the same assembly run. The processor and the memory, because the processor basically plugs directly into the memory. I mean, the, the processor connects to the socket, the socket connects to the motherboard, the motherboard connects to the memory. But basically, the motherboard's not really doing much with that. It's providing power to the RAM, but it's basically wired directly into the processor the RAM is. And so because of that, the RAM and the processor sort of have to do training and all sorts of weird, funky voodoo stuff to make sure that everything works properly. One of the big differences with DDR4 versus DDR3 is that DDR4 is more tolerant of wires that are different lengths. And so the DDR3 bus was one of the few remaining parallel buses. And so if we look at it, we've gone from parallel ATA, remember the ribbon cables that used to connect your hard drives into serial ATA. We've gone from parallel buses like PCI, uh, where 32 bits of information is transferred in parallel, to serial buses like PCI Express, where there are multiple sort of independent, sort of not really serial lanes through which information is, is transferred. DDR4 is kind of getting there. It's not exactly there, but it's a little bit more tolerant of different interconnect wire links. So sometimes if you look at an old motherboard and you look at the traces, some of the wires go straight there, and some of them sort of have this really long sort of, you know, S-shaped pattern or something. And a lot of the time that's done uh, because of the harmonics of the electrons on the wire. So electrons down this wire travel a certain distance, electrons down this other wire travel a shorter distance, and when you've got really high-speed circuits, that's a problem. So DDR4 deals with that like non-parallel buses, but not exactly. And so the timings are really important. And so whenever you install new RAM, you may have to clear your CMOS, or if you have an ASUS board, you may have to hit the MEM OK button, or something to retrain the system from the processor to the RAM. And then the, those training values are basically stored by the system so that the next time it boots up, it remembers the RAM, and so they sort of marry together. And so extreme memory profiles is a set of alternative timings that are not the you know sort of worst case scenario timings or sort of the lowest common denominator settings. So with DDR4 out of the box, it's 2133. You can get a DDR4 kit that is only 2133. You can get a DDR4 kit that's, you know, 2600, 3000. This is the memory speed. Sometimes you can get borderline DDR4 kits where it's 2133 or, you know, 2600. But if we really look at the timings, the 2133 timings are quick and the 2600 timings are very slow. And so effectively, even though the RAM is clocked at 2600 because of the wait states and how long you're waiting to access columns and things like that to do with the arrangement of the chips on the DIMM and like physically, electrically, how it's laid out and the silicon that you're dealing with in the, in the memory chips, you end up in a situation where the RAM's not really that much faster. And so you really, you got to run some benchmarks. You'll have to run something like ADA64 or something like that to check 
memory, different kinds of memory operations, memory read, memory write, operations where you're fetching information randomly from memory, where you're fetching information linearly from memory. Those are the kinds of things that you really need to do to sort of figure out, you know, how your RAM has improved based on overclocking and playing with the timings. And so because overclocking RAM is a ludicrously complicated thing to do, if you're messing with the individual timings and it's really easy to get wrong and it's really easy to make your system unstable, the XMP profile technology was born on the Intel platform. Now, uh, AMD has some other different things and some motherboard manufacturers are able to do some funky voodoo and I read from that and actually use that on an AMD platform. But generally XMP is an Intel technology, but you can totally use it on an AMD platform for the motherboards that try to sort of translate it to deal with that but we're talking about ddr4 right now so amd's kind of left in the cold a little bit on that so so the first thing to do when you've got your ram is to just physically install your ram by default it's going to boot up and it's going to boot up at 2133 it's going to boot up at sort of the the jdec memory standard 2133 there's no option this particular g skills kit supports up to DDR4 3000, so that's quite a gain over 2133, but in order to get at it, you'll have to use the XMP, the Extreme Memory Profile. Now, if you get an ASUS board, a lot of the channel boards and the, the Maximus boards from ASUS, they have this easy XMP button. You can literally just install the RAM, throw the switch. You don't have to go into the UEFI, you don't have to do anything. It just, you throw the switch, it turns green, you boot it, basically okay. There's a lot on the motherboard that says mem okay if it's not okay, but it's not really a big deal to go into the UEFI and mess with it. Almost all other boards have a thing in the UEFI where you just click one button, XMP profile, you're good to go. But even if you don't want to do that, you've got the, you got the switch option, so I thought I'd mention it. And so installing this and overclocking the memory from 2133 to 3000, it's basically that easy. You just install it, throw the switch, you're done. If you don't have the switch, you just have to go into your BIOS and look for something like the XMP profile. It may be under tweaking or overclocking or whatever. AI clock overtuner XMP profile. Set it for XMP. There'll be an option that lets you pick XMP profiles. In this case, this RAM kit only has one XMP profile, so you only have one option. Sometimes you'll have more than one option for XMP, depending on, you know, if you've got a choice of like 2600 and 3000 or 3000 and 3200 or whatever, you can have more than one XMP profile. Generally, you want the fastest one, unless it's unstable, and then you want to back off and use a different one. In this particular case, we did some burn-in testing with this kit from G-Skill. It was totally stable after 48 hours of basically grueling benchmark conditions. So DDR4 3000 Z170, basically fine. The motherboards that we're testing, you know, they report overclockability up to 3400, 3600, 3866, really high speeds, just about four gigahertz in terms of system memory. Now the reality is that unless you're using onboard graphics, it doesn't really make a lot of difference in the performance of the machine. You've got a little bit more bandwidth and you've got a little bit more headroom with DDR4 than you did with DDR3, but in terms of how fast and responsive the system is and a lot of other things, the speed of the RAM really doesn't make a huge difference. It does help if you're doing things like compression or you're moving through very large files. If you routinely download terabytes of information and you really want to extract things really fast and you've got a really fast disk subsystem to keep up with it to where you're doing a lot of stuff in RAM. Uh, I don't, RAM's still not really even a bottleneck, even in that case, but it does help a little bit. And you can kind of see that from the A to 64 benchmarks. But the other thing that's nice about the XMP profile is that generally the higher end RAM kits have XMP profiles, which means that they support more than just the bare minimum of 2133. That means the manufacturer has basically worked on it and certified that that is going to work with this memory kit. So if you have the option, turn it on. You get an extra performance benefit. You might as well turn it on. It's not going to make your system unstable. It, at least it shouldn't. If it does, you can always go back to 2133. But you know, even if it's just a little bit faster, if your RAM kit supports the XMP, you should turn that on. Probably a lot of you out there are running memory kits where you've just installed it, installed your operating system, and then, you know, you've, you've been good. It's like, I don't want to mess with it. So if you haven't set your XMP profile and your memory supports it, then you totally should, because it's not really exactly overclocking. I mean, what it's doing here in this case is normally the DDR4 is running at 1.2 volts. Well, you up the voltage to 1.35, and then all of a sudden you've got a little bit more headroom on the RAM because this RAM was designed to operate at 1.2 or 1.35. And so if you give it more voltage, it can get more done. And so it'll run at 3000 with 1.35 volts, or you can run it at 2133 with 1.2 volts if you're, you know, in a cabin in the woods that's completely solar powered and every little tenth of a volt matters for what you're doing. So... We've got a 16 gigabyte kit from G-Skill that is specifically designed for Z170. I mean, it's DDR4, but DDR4 that can go really fast. So 
We've got it installed. It was completely painless. We tried it on a number of other motherboards. Haven't had any problems. Did a 48 hour burn-in test. DDR4 3000, pretty solid. That's pretty much it. There's not really a lot to RAM. So if you pick up one of these kits or you have any questions or anything like that, head over to the forums at techsyndicate.com. If you have trouble installing your RAM, well, head on over to the forums at techsyndicate.com because we can probably help you because I'm pretty sure my grandma can install RAM. So I think you'll be all right. I'm Wendell, over now.